Hi guys, it's Andrea from andreatulli.com and I'm here with you today for another email Monday where I take one of your emails that you sent me with a question and answer it here on YouTube, hoping that it can help all of you out with uh, answering this question. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video. And uh, if you have any other questions, comments, leave them below. Feel free to contact me on Twitter, Instagram, email. Check out my blog, andreatulli.com. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so our first email to, uh, today is from a uh, reader, watcher on YouTube named Austin. And so I'm just going to read the email that he sent us. I have my email right here. So Austin said, hi, Dr. Tooley. My name's Austin. I'm a freshman in college, currently majoring in business management, but planning to go to PA school right after I graduate business school. Awesome. So um, I watched the video of you interviewing the nurse who went to med school, af who went to med school after nursing school, and it really had me thinking. I'm so interested in medicine, but I sometimes doubt myself. How do you know if you can even handle medical school? Honestly, I was not the greatest student in high school, but college seems totally different for me. I actually want to study. Good. Uh, I'm actually trying my best, and I'm actually doing well. Good. Also, between my business degree and PA school, it's six years, so why not go two more and become a doctor? That's what I keep telling myself, but it all freaks me out. I don't even know where to begin. What would you recommend for someone in my situation? I know this is probably a long shot, but your feedback could really inspire and influence me to proceed with my future goals. All right, well, thank you so much for this email question. This is an excellent question. And I feel like I've, I've maybe answered parts of this in other videos. So I would recommend checking out one video about how to know medical school is right for you, which is kind of, I talk about how to know if you can handle medical school or how to know if you really want to go to medical school. Um, and then kind of motivation for pre-meds where I talk about kind of how to keep studying and kind of how to go on this long journey to medical school. But I think I get this question a lot where how do I know if I can even make it to medical school? Did you ever doubt yourself? Um, how do you know if it's the right decision? Things like that. And so I think that the best thing that you can do is to just take it one step at a time. If you're a high school student and you're thinking maybe medical school, well then start down that path because the worst case scenario is that you decide it's not for you and you change your mind and that's okay. But if it's truly your passion, if it's truly what you wanna do, then you owe it to yourself to try and to see if you can make it. And the, the biggest thing that's gonna tell you is just how you do every step of the way. So start out college as a freshman and um, if you watch my video with Dr. Tosh, the infectious disease specialist, he gives the best advice and just says, just try to get the best grades you possibly can first semester. Just try to get straight A's first semester. And that's a perfect goal. Don't think about the MCAT, don't think about anything long term. Just think about, I wanna get straight A's, I wanna get a 4.0 first semester of college. And then the sex, say you don't. I don't think I did, I think I got like, um, a couple A minuses or B plus my first semester in college. And so then next semester say, okay, well then I wanna get a 4.0 next semester and just continue trying to get the best grades you can. And if you're doing okay, then each step of the way will kind of give you that reassurance um, and solidify the fact that you're on the right track, that, this, that you can make it. Because the best way to know if you can make it in medical school is if you can make it as a pre-med because the vast majority of people who are accepted into medical school end up graduating medical school. So if you get accepted, then, then you're good to go. So basically just trying to get the absolute best grades you can every step of the way is going to tell you, yes, I can do this. Yes, I can make it. And even though medical school is much harder than undergrad, it, all of that's kind of preparing you for medical school. So doing well and handling the rigors of of your academic load in undergrad is what's going to allow you to be prepared for medical school. So just do the best you can every step of the way. And then also just making sure that you are liking this. If you're miserable and you hate studying and um, you hate what you're learning, then that should be something in the back of your mind thinking like, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna study for four, six, eight more years. I This isn't for me. And so just taking it one step of the at a time, doing your best, and then really paying attention to how you feel and how you like it 
is also going to be a really good way to know if you can handle it and if you're on the right path. So basically, if you are in undergrad and you're struggling, you're getting C's and D's, maybe a B here and there, but you're really not getting A's, you just can't, can't get that to that level in class, um, then either you need to reevaluate how you're studying and how much time you're putting into the course, but if you honestly think that you're trying your, your hardest and like this is the most that you can give and you're still not coming out with A's or B pluses or things like that, then that's a good time to reevaluate and think maybe academically the rigors of medical school aren't going to be for you and it's just not something that you can can do um, because honestly it's a really challenging career not everybody can make it to medical school and not everybody can make it as a physician but that's why the whole health world of healthcare is so incredible because there's a million ways to be part of patient care and to really excel in your own field and to feel like you're part of the team, even if you're not the head physician. So there's tons of other things that you can do for patients and act like a physician in certain ways or be the expert. You know, I don't question um, the physical therapist or the speech pathologist or the occupational therapist or other people who have their set role on the healthcare team. And even though they're not the physician, they're making decisions for patient care. And so just because you can't make it down the pre-med course, maybe you hate pre-med, but maybe um, the physical therapy side of things, you would be incredible and you would excel, or maybe occupational therapy is where you're passionate or speech pathology or um, nursing or anything. I mean, there's so many amazing ways that you can be involved. And so don't have just a one track mind and then think, oh, I can't do this, healthcare is not for me. If you wanna be involved with patients and you wanna be part of the team, but you don't think that academically medical school is where you can make it, um, then, then start thinking about other things that you're passionate about and other ways that you might wanna get involved and find other interests. There's all kinds of things you can do. So those are all kind of things to think about on, on this path to medical school. All right, and so the second part of his question is saying, you know, if he's gonna go to PA school for six years, which means four of undergrad and then two of PA school, why not just go two more years, which would be four of undergrad and four of medical school and become a physician? So that's a great question, but I think the one thing Austin is not thinking about here is the fact that after medical school, you're not done. You still have residency. And so residency is minimum three years, my particular residency program in ophthalmology is four years. Um, some are six, seven, and more if you want to do a fellowship and even further subspecialize. And so really PA school is six years. Medical school is by the time you're a licensed, board certified, independently practicing physician is 12. And so um, that's four of undergrad, four of medical school, and probably four of residency. So 11 to 12 years. Um, you're, you're making a salary and you're making money as a resident. It's not as much as what a PA would make and it's not as much as what you'd make as an independently practicing physician. And so it's not really two more years. It's more like six more years, five or six more years. Uh, so I think that's another thing to think about. But the end of the day and the point that I really want to get across is that when you're a freshman in college, like Austin is, who's emailing us, you don't have to make these decisions day one. You can take it step by step and see how you do in biology, see how you do in chemistry. Those are the those classes that you take freshman year are some of the hardest pre-med classes that you'll end up taking. See how you do in organic chemistry. And that's why this some people say it's a weed out process and I don't like to think of it that way, but it's a it's a step by step process that will lead you to medical school. And if you keep succeeding, you kind of keep staying down that road. And if you keep struggling and having a hard time, then it will kind of lead you to reevaluate what you're doing. And and so just reassure yourself that all you're doing is following the steps laid out in front of you and that's all you can do. And if you're doing the absolute best you can and getting the absolute best grades you can, then just let that guide you. And that's how you'll know because if you are a junior in college and you've gotten excellent grades and you've done well on the MCAT, then you will make it in medical school. I have no doubt. If you get accepted into medical school, 
it, it's a huge percentage. I don't know that I should look up the actual number, but I think it's around 90% or something like that of American medical students who actually end up graduating. And so I think that just let that reassure you and put your self doubts aside and just do the best you can and study as hard as you possibly can and make sure that you love what you're doing because you're spending many, many years of your life doing this, okay? So that's the email question for today. I hope that uh, helped you, Austin, and I hope that helps any of you watching out there. I'd love to hear your comments and what you think about this, so leave them all below. And if you wanna get in touch with me, andreatooley.com, Twitter, Instagram, and I'll talk to you all later. Okay, bye.